Mr. Prime Minister, um, the constitution has sailed through, it, I mean, it sailed through uh, Parliament yesterday. Yeah. Uh, so what's the next step? <coughs> the next step is for the constitution to be presented to the Senate. And once the Senate is approved, which means that both houses have approved the, the bill, uh, it now awaits the President's assent. Mm. And hopefully in the next week it should be able to be accomplished. Mm. And, and what can we then expect? Uh, what then expect is that uh, a number of processes will then follow. Uh, first one is there's got to be an alignment of all the laws, uh, especially mm. those that impinge on the, on the elections, to be realigned to the new constitutional, mm. uh, which will be the constitution of the country. Mm -hmm. And what are those and new laws? Oh, there are so many, AIPA, POSA, mm -hmm. the Electoral Act in the main. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they are discussing it, what, what changes will be required in terms of the new, uh, the new constitution. Uh, and generally just uh, remove all impediments to uh, the freedoms of the people. Um, after that, after the laws, we, we have to have uh, one month voter registration, followed by one month of voter inspection. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at two months there. Mm -hmm. uh, after that, uh, once these uh, steps have been taken, it's now needs for the for the consultation around the date of election, which means that you have to give certain legal notices, uh, one month of notice, uh, and hopefully that's uh, that's that's. Uh, that's the completion of the roadmap. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's the issue of reforms, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, that <coughs> that seems to be uh, that seems to be really, you know, uh, causing a lot of uh, tension in the country right now. Especially looking at the issue of secure sec secure 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 Sorry, uh, with general uh, with the general saying, you know, they are they are not ready to uh, to to meet uh, or, or rather the, the the security sector they are saying you know it's something that is uncalled for so well it's not it's not their choice it's not their choice really uh, mm -hmm. the choice is political uh, it's a political process it has nothing to do with general mm -hmm. Uh, if, if, if the security sector is answerable to the civilian authority and the civilian authority feel that it is important to draw up a code of conduct for the role of the security sector, that's up to that. But if they were to subvert the role of the security, the role of the civilian authority, it means that they've subverted the constitution. Is that what they are saying? Mm -hmm. uh, I believe uh, all our soldiers, all our policemen are sworn in to uphold the constitutional provisions. And that uh, we have to distinguish between the institutional uh, behavior uh, and the individual behavior. Uh, we cannot focus on individual behavior. We have to focus on the institutional behavior. Mm. But, but, but what sort of message are they? Are they, really they are sending saying? a very good message. Mm. And the good message is that we will not respect the constitutional process. We will not respect the outcome uh, of, the, of the election. We will actually subvert the will of the people. And I think the timing is very good because then SADAC and the AU and all the people who are concerned about the behavior of some of these uh, securocrats will now see that this is an issue that needs attention. Mm -hmm. But how, how are you going to handle it yourself? No, it's not, it's not for me to handle it. It's all of us. Uh, the stakeholders of this electoral, electoral process. Uh, ourselves, ZANU-PF, uh, the SADAC, AU, those that will say that we want to conduct a free and fair election, which is credible, which is legitimate. Now, if somebody threatens the people before even they have cast their vote, what's the use of going through that process? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that what the, the choice is for the country? I don't think it is. It is, sub, it is almost tantamount to a coup before the coup has been undertaken. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what I was going to ask. Uh, that you know, Do you see perhaps a coup? Uh, no, uh, I don't think that. Uh, I don't think that, uh, uh, as an institution, uh, uh, these institutions are there to subvert the will of the people. Mm -hmm. I think that all Zimbabweans, including including these security institutions, are committed to see Zimbabwe move forward. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be to, to engage in a reversal of the progress we have made over the last four years. Mm -hmm. 
and your recent uh, diplomatic offensive, Prime yeah. Minister, uh, what, what came out of it? You know, looking at uh, how, you know, the, I mean, the criticism uh, that, that from, from brought, which, yeah, from criticism from, from, from ZANPF <laughs> and uh, from state newspapers. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, well, I just brushed that aside. Okay. I have as much right to engage the people who are, who are our guarantors uh, to update them mm -hmm. on what's happening. And in this case, I think it's a very timely process. Mm -hmm. We are celebrating 50 years of Africa, and Africa is a guarantor of our global political agreement. And therefore, to update leaders on what is happening, including the fact that we're actually finding the political hurdles of lack of political will on the part of President Mugabe and Zanupiev to submit themselves to the issues that we have agreed, uh, that this is a political hurdle. Mm -hmm. And we have all evidence to demonstrate that. And so it is up to the leadership of SADC, up to the leadership of AU, to call ZANU-PF and President Mugabe to order, because they have the right to call them to order. Mm, but and, but and, they are saying you had all these four years to work on the implementation of the... Well, the four years of frustrating uh, polit lack of political will on the part of ZANU-PF. Mm. Uh, we make agreements, they, subvert, they don't want to agree on that. Mm. So eventually we are saying we can't go to election without these reforms. Mm. So it's necessary to engage mm. the broader African community. Mm -hmm. and, and looking at the GNU itself, uh, would you say it has been a worthwhile uh, to, to be part of the, of the inclusive government? That's, that's, for, that's, that's for Zimbabweans to testify. Mm. And I'm sure that every Zimbabwean will testify to the progress that has been made over the last four years. Mm. Given our situation in 2008, every Zimbabwean across the political divide will demonstrate that, uh, that uh, this has been, in hindsight, a very good political move. Mm -hmm. And when when do we expect the elections? When, when, when I don't have I don't have a particular date. There are processes, there are legal and political processes that will determine the, the date of election. Mm -hmm. But certainly, I can only say that it cannot go beyond October. Mm -hmm. Remember that we have 29 June, which is the end of Parliament. And from then on, according to the transitional mechanisms, we have four months in which the executive has to conduct an election. Mm -hmm. So within those four months, that we have to go to an election. Mm -hmm. And the issue of funding? If you... Funding, I think, has become an issue. Uh, firstly, we, we, we appreciated the fact that uh, we don't have sufficient resources ourselves. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we have to seek United Nations support. But you see, the United Nations have come out with a, with, a, with, a, with a process that they need to evaluate the political situation first before they can consider our request, uh, which process is actually under consideration. But whilst we are doing that, our colleagues in ZANU-PF have cried foul that we don't want external interference. But you cannot have it both ways. On one end, you need people's money. On the other, you don't want, to, you don't want those people to set terms. Uh, it's, it's something that we are grappling with. So there is no consensus really as to this approach. Mm. And, and how well prepared uh, is your party for these uh, elections, uh, seeing you know, the, that you, you have failed as a party to conduct the primary elections? Who has failed to conduct primary elections? <laughs> like they were supposed to start... Who said uh, that? I want to say this. <laughs> we will conduct our elections, primary or otherwise, when we want and Timing is very important. But why did they fail why? to kick off last, we last just week? Decided, we just decided we'll do it after our policy conference. Mm -hmm. Because we have to time our primary elections with regards to where the possible elections will be conducted. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's not a legal violation of anyone. Mm -hmm. We are ready to conduct our election. We have agreed on the rules. We have got our electoral colleges for all the primaries. ZANU-PF has just has not even agreed on what rules will apply in their primary elections. So why would we... Uh, be pressurized to go and conduct primary elections with the people who are not even ready to conduct to even to have agreed rules. Mm -hmm. And uh, what 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 is your like your your, your your what is it that you fear most uh, about the, the coming uh, the upcoming elections, considering the violence and the no no the violence is is you know our elections have always been characterized by violence. Mm -hmm. We have taken measures since eleven eleven. Uh, two years ago, to make a public call for peaceful elections as political leaders. We've got a joint monitoring committee which is cascaded down to the branches uh, which we want to be. So we have got an internal as well as the SADAC monitoring team joining with our JOMIC 
to monitor violence. So mm. there is not only political uh, uh, statements, the fact that we need peaceful elections, but also the fact that if we have to, correct, to conduct a credible election, mm. definitely violence is not the issue. What we have to, of course, uh, guard against uh, is fraudulent activities or trying to subvert the will of the people. That's what I'm afraid of. Mm -hmm. and, and what's the general mood? In the My party right is now? ready. My party is ready to go in this election. I have no doubt that when we, if we won the last election, which everyone accepts, we won the last election, mm -hmm. uh, I don't see any reason why people should change that position. Mm -hmm. I see a more positive expression of that, that people want change. Mm. And that change is represented by the MDC. Mm. And do you still believe that you are the best hope for, 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 I can't for, evaluate for change? My, I can't evaluate myself. I can only say that the MDC represents the most positive uh, stage for, for the country. Mm. Uh, the most transformation that has ever taken place in that country. We have got a jobs plan, we have got all the plans in place. We represent a more robust future uh, rather than the archaic ZANU-PF past, <laughs> you know. Mm. So there is a very distinctive narrative between the two parties. Mm. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, for your time. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you.